Brian Tracy said, to overcome fear, act as if it were impossible to fail, and it shall be. He emphasized that the fear of failure is the greatest barrier to success in adult life. When this fear is taken to extremes, we become overly focused on avoiding mistakes and seeking security above all else. This fear can paralyze us. It manifests in the words, I can't, I can't, and is physically felt in the body, starting in the solar plexus, moving to a rapid heartbeat, quickened breathing, a tight throat, and even a sudden need to use the bathroom. Another major fear that hinders performance and self-expression is the fear of rejection or criticism. This fear often originates from childhood experiences where parental love was conditional on our behavior. If we pleased our parents, we received love and approval. If not, their affection was withdrawn, which we interpreted as rejection. According to psychologists, many adult problems stem from such withheld love during childhood. As adults, those raised with conditional love often become preoccupied with others' opinions. For instance, many men develop type A behavior marked by hostility, suspicion, and an obsessive drive to perform at exceedingly high levels. This behavior reflects a mindset of, I have to, I have to, I have to perform. I have to achieve results. I have to please others. It is often linked to the belief that working harder and achieving more is necessary to satisfy authority figures who resemble surrogate parents. More than 99% of adults grapple with both fears, the fear of failure and the fear of rejection. They find themselves trapped in the conflicting feelings of, I can't, but I have to, or I have to, I can't. I personally see fear and worry are closely intertwined, each feeding off the other and creating a cycle that can hinder our progress. Roan often emphasized the power of mindset and personal responsibility in overcoming challenges. Fear is the emotional response to perceived threats or uncertainties. It's that nagging feeling that something might go wrong which can paralyze us if we let it. Roan believed that fear is often rooted in our own limiting beliefs and misconceptions. It's the mind's way of protecting us from potential failure or discomfort, but it can also keep us from reaching our full potential. Worry, on the other hand, is the mental engagement with these fears. It's the constant replaying of worst case scenarios and the overthinking of problems that may never even come to pass. Roan would say that worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but gets you nowhere. It drains your energy and focus, preventing you from taking constructive action. Worry is often a distortion of reality, where we filter facts through a negative lens and declare these distortions as the whole truth. It's like a loud alarm sounding off for a minor problem. Worry drains our mental energy, much like letting the starter run a car battery down without ever starting the engine. It's a sign of incomplete information, lack of preparation, and insufficient courage or understanding. Left unchecked, worry can spiral out of control, causing more harm than the issues it seeks to address. The sorrow and regret from letting worry dominate can be immense, so it's crucial to address it promptly. To combat worry, start by recognizing it for what it is, a mental trap fueled by incomplete facts and negative assumptions. Acknowledge its effects on your life and then make a decisive choice to overcome it. The first step is to make a conscious decision to free yourself from the grip of worry, transforming it into actionable steps toward understanding and resolving the underlying issues. Why let worry continue to deplete your resources and hold you back? Why allow it to keep you from reaching your full potential, improving your relationships, or achieving better results? Worry is a burden you can eliminate, and it's time to stop letting it rob you of your well-being and success. While it's natural to be concerned about important matters, excessive worry consumes too much of your mental and emotional energy. Life is challenging and full of risks, but undue concern only hinders your progress. For example, planning a trip requires some concern about the car's condition and the route, but obsessing over the possibility of an accident would turn the trip into a nightmare rather than an enjoyable experience. To overcome this, make a firm decision to stop letting worry control your life. Declare that you're done with the negative mental images and false fears. Commit to freeing yourself from the drain worry places on your confidence and resources. 
embrace a mindset of confidence and adventure, and refuse to be tricked by undue concern. Stop letting worry drain your energy and hinder your potential. Reflect on all the fears and catastrophic predictions that never came to pass. Most of what you worry about never happens, and it's time to break free from this cycle. Recognize that worry often stems from distorted views and well-meaning advisors who overemphasize negative outcomes. Instead of letting worry control your life, question your fears and assess them against past experiences. By examining your worries critically, you shift from being controlled by them to using them as a tool for learning and improvement. Understand that worry and concern are a natural part of life, just like the changing seasons. Life brings challenges, and while worry may arise, it's essential to manage it effectively. Like handling the winter season, prepare for worry, but don't let it overwhelm you. Use worry as a prompt for constructive action, turning it into a catalyst for confidence and growth. Remember, just as winter follows autumn, challenges will come, but so will opportunities. Embrace this cycle, stay prepared, and leverage both the difficulties and the opportunities they bring to succeed. The real test in life is not just to face opportunities, but to seize them, especially when the inevitable winters come our way. Instead of dreading these tough times, learn to make the most of them. Picture yourself snug by a warm fire, surrounded by good company, feeling secure despite the season. Recognize that winters and nights will pass, and as you grow and progress, you'll handle each challenge more effectively and enjoy every day more fully. Don't let worry trick you into believing the worst. Reflect on past fears and see that most never came to pass. This will help you shift from being controlled by worry to taking action with confidence. Facing the facts of life is not a sign of negativity. It's a step towards strength and growth. Accept that difficulties are part of the journey and should not consume your mental and emotional resources. Just like you prepare for winter by planning and gathering supplies, approach your worries with a clear strategy. Balance your understanding of facts with the power of faith. Faith isn't about waiting for perfect conditions. It's about moving forward with conviction, even when you don't have all the answers. Build confidence by setting clear goals, staying disciplined, and taking consistent action. Self-development is the key to transforming worry into progress. It's not just about being positive, but about mastering your emotions and actions to overcome fear and doubt. Look to nature for lessons, like how ants prepare for winter, and apply these insights to your life. Recognize that both opportunities and challenges will come, and your success depends on how well you prepare and respond. Embrace life's changing seasons with resilience and proactive effort. Use difficulties as chances for growth and let confidence guide you. The greatest obstacle to self-confidence is guilt from not doing your best. Address tasks diligently, set goals, and maintain discipline. Draw on the wisdom of experience and let it drive you forward. With diligence and action, you can turn every challenge into a stepping stone for success. Walk away from the 97%. Don't use their vocabulary, excuses, or method of drift and neglect. Won't even walk around the block for their health won't even eat an apple a day, won't even take the time to refine their philosophy for a better life. Walk away and join the 3%. Guess how many people can retire from the income of their own personal resources when it comes time to retire? Answer, 5%. In America, 5% of the people are independent. 95% are dependent. Take charge of your own retirement. You can multiply it at least by five. Let the government take care of it. Some company take care of it. You got to divide by five. I'm asking you to take charge of your own retirement. Take charge of your own life. It happens to be one of the titles of my own cassette program. Take charge of your own life. That's what we've talked about here all morning. Take charge of your own day. Don't have days like most people have. You'll wind up broke and poor. Pennies, no treasures, trinkets, no values. Change it all. And it starts as simple as an apple a day. It starts as simple as the first book of your new library. It starts as simple as the first journal that you get and make the first entry that when people see it will say, this is the beginning of a study of a serious student. They're going to be healthy. They're going to be powerful. They're going to be rich. 
They're going to have it all. Look, they've committed themselves to a whole new journey. I'm asking you to do that. But what's easy to do is what's easy not to do. Walk away from the 90%, walk away from the 97%, walk away from the 95%. Don't go where they go. Don't do what they do. Don't talk like they talk. Develop your own whole new language. I'm asking you not to hope they're going to fix this out here next year so that you'll be healthier. I'm asking you to pick up some new disciplines so that you will be healthier. Drive yourself to do it book by book, entry by entry. It's all available for you. Success is something you attract by the person you become. It's not about pursuing or chasing success. Rather, it's about developing yourself and attracting success through your growth. Success is essentially a numbers game and it's crucial to evaluate your own progress. For instance, how many books have you read in the past 90 days? To transform your life, you need to become cultured, powerful, sophisticated, healthy, and influential. Consider how committed you are to leveraging available resources to turn them into valuable assets. In this unprecedented era, unlike any in the past six and a half thousand years, it's vital to design your own happiness. Happiness isn't something to be postponed or left to chance. It's something you create. It requires study, practice, and dedication. Happiness is an art form, not an accident, and anyone can study and practice it. Culture and sophistication are within reach for everyone. For example, a book on sophistication might cost 40 pounds, not 4,000 pounds. In America, everything is accessible if you're committed to learning and growing. Culture and sophistication are not about financial status, they are achieved through study and practice. Money alone doesn't make you sophisticated or cultured. I've seen wealthy individuals who are not sophisticated at all. Money does not necessarily equate to refinement. If you want to be wealthy, you must study wealth. Develop a powerful financial plan that guides you to your goals. If you're stuck like I was at age 25, make a personal commitment today to study and change. Five years from now, no one will question why you don't have a superior plan or are not living in a superior country with superior opportunities. This commitment will mark one of the most exciting days of your life, not because of any seminar, but because of your dedication to this simple process. Success avoids incompetent individuals. Winning the lottery, for example, can lead to disaster if one lacks personal development to manage it effectively. The key is to grow continually, whether faced with success or failure. Strive to become bigger than your fortune or problem. Keep growing and evolving until success becomes a natural outcome of the person you've become. Understanding this will transform your approach and operations. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. What you pursue usually eludes you like a butterfly, something you go after that you can't catch. Success is something you attract like a magnet by the person you become. To attract attractive people, you must be attractive. To attract powerful people, you must be powerful. To attract committed people, you must be committed. Instead of going to work on them, you go to work on yourself. You work harder on yourself than you work on the job. And if you become, you can attract. The whole key is to make yourself valuable. The key is to make yourself attractive. The key is to make yourself skillful, competent, willing, powerful, unique, sophisticated, cultured, being able to manage, in control, healthy. The whole key really to the future is personal development because the greatest gift you can give to someone else is your personal development, self-development, self-investment. The greatest gift you can give is your own personal development. If I become 10 times wiser, 10 times stronger, 10 times brighter, 10 times more competent, Think of what that will do for my success. If I grow, think of what that will do for my future. Self-development earns success. Self-investment earns respect. And the only way to make a better and better investment in your future is to become better and stronger and wiser and more competent. And the more attractive you become, the more attractive you are. And the more attractive you are, the more you attract success. Self-development, self-investment attracts success. That's powerful. 